What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Barely Legal and Web3. I'm your host, Jamelia Greer, bringing you the latest in Web3 every week with a legal twist. So hold on to your digital wallets and let's get into it. I think I called it about a year and a half ago when the whole world was hyped up about cryptocurrency. And my main question was, what does this mean in the context of China? For those of you that are wondering what I'm talking about as it relates to China and cryptocurrency, a couple of days ago, Chinese court declared that virtual assets are legal property protected by law. And this is huge for China. And to be very honest, guys, it's huge for the rest of the world. Because whatever trends are happening in the world, whether it's in technology or trade or financial markets, when you add China into the mix, it just amplifies. It really does. So for a while now, China has been along a similar stance with India in terms of whether or not it really wants to allow cryptocurrency and NFTs and all sorts of virtual assets to be operating within their economies. And so this is huge news for China, not just because it's kind of a green light in some ways. I think there are still some hurdles that the market needs to go over, as this is just one court ruling and saying that digital assets are legally protected. It actually just raises bigger questions about what does it mean for businesses in China that want to get involved in cryptocurrency? Because there are still laws in place that prohibit that sort of thing. And you guys have to remember that the Chinese economy right now is to the, up to this date has been, it's been suffering, it's been stagnated. In the wake of COVID, it's been really difficult to see growth in China. And of course, you know, there have been other events with respect to real estate, particularly uh, real estate company bankruptcies that have been all over the news. And the world really depends on China. I know that could be like a political statement seen by some, but it's true. The Chinese economy is one of the major motors of the world economy. So to the extent that the Chinese economy is not participating in Web3 economic growth, or it's not participating in cryptocurrency, that's huge. But when the green light happens, as it seems to have started to happen, that's also big news. And what does that actually mean for all of the other players? What does it mean for VCs? What does it mean for investors? What does it mean for people that actually want to get involved in Chinese business and Web3? Those are the questions that I think we should be thinking about today. The main question that we all should be thinking about is, what is the end result? There have been so many mixed signals with respect to cryptocurrency in China, from whether Chinese-based customers can you know, participate on certain platforms versus whether businesses can set up and whether businesses can launch their own cryptocurrency. What does that actually mean? This ruling, I would say, puts China in the same boat as the US. We have a lot of conflicting regulatory signals. We have China on one hand, the court system saying that cryptocurrency is legal and that it is legal property protected by law. Well, that raises the question that if it's legal property protected by law, how did you obtain it? Because <laughs> you're not supposed to be dealing in it anyway. Um, that's very interesting. And then, you know, you have, on the other hand, people who are in China that want to get involved in this, but they don't actually know if they can get involved in cryptocurrency. So that's always there. And it's very similar to what's happening in the U.S. In the U.S. right now, the legislature is struggling, really, really struggling, to create a real framework for virtual assets. They are attempting to pin it to securities and to throw it into the basket of a very, very old court ruling called the Howey test and to lump everything into one category and make it the same. And there's just struggling both in the US and in China about how to deal with cryptocurrency. I think it's interesting that both countries recognize that cryptocurrency is a huge opportunity, but it's also a huge threat. It's a huge threat to the status quo. 
And you see that in the US banking system. You see that in terms of the big boys like Visa and MasterCard and others, even our, our digital payments platforms that want to get involved in cryptocurrency, but they're not afraid, they're not sure about how to do it the right way. So that's huge. And I think this is one of those rare times in history that the United States and China are actually in the same boat. They actually are agreeing on a topic in a very weird kind of way. <laughs> Both of their, them are saying cryptocurrency is great, but we have no idea how to regulate it and what to do with it. So we're just going to send mixed signals to everybody and hope for the best. I don't agree with that stance. I think that is a huge mistake on both sides, and I really hope that it resolves very soon. The reason that this is so relevant and the reason that the world has to pay attention to a major shift like this is because whatever China does, it is huge. China, if you can recall and think about the whole trend of cheap labor that happened in China over the past 20, 25 years, that access to, as we call, cheap labor, it changed the whole manufacturing industry worldwide. It, it, it totally changed the playing field. Thousands of Americans lost jobs because they were you know, too expensive. And so many large multinational companies shift their operations to China because it was economically advantageous for them to do that. Fine, that's a fact. But what we need to recognize and pay attention to right now is that to the extent that China is thinking about, I won't even say thinking about, because here's an article on the South China Morning Post that says Shanghai expands the scope of virtual asset trading. They want to be a data industry innovation highland worth $69 billion in the next two years. To the extent that that's true, and Shanghai actually does that, where you know usually if they say something in the South China Morning Post, they do that. To the extent that's true, guys, just the scale of China changing its mind and pivoting towards cryptocurrency is really going to change the space. And, I, and I, I can't underline that enough for you guys listening, because for the past year or so, the markets I've been focused on have been US, Dubai, and Singapore. I've mainly focused on those markets, and I think there's been so much more activity in the U.S. for sure, but I think up until, you know, very recently, there's been a huge flow of interest into Web3 virtual assets into Dubai. That's great. But now, if China gets its stuff together, I'm not, you know, if China gets its stuff together and says, no, 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 actually, we have a regulatory framework for virtual assets, come here and set up your Web3 company. If that happens, things are going to look very different. And I'm calling it right now. And guys, if you follow this show, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that when I call things, they happen. So I'm just saying, I'm saying if China decides to step its toe in the Web3 waters, everybody else can just have a seat because it's going to be huge. And I'm going to end on that note. I hope you enjoyed this commentary about China and what's going on there with respect to crypto. Stay tuned for other stuff in Barely Legal and Web3. If you are not following on Twitter, make sure you do that and tap in wherever you can find the show. I'd love to hear from you guys. Take care.